Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Unko Ashman Dani bin Unko Mulewa. <coughs> Matric number 1613187. And I would, I'm here today to actually talk about um, John Mills' book on liberty, specifically chapters uh, 2 and 3. Now, from what I have gathered and what I have understood is that in chapter 2 of John Mills on liberty, he actually is expressing his opinions on people's right to express their opinions, whether it being true or false. Now, um, he says that people should be allowed to, should people be allowed to coerce anyone's opinions? Uh, should people be allowed to silence other people's opinions? Do men, does mankind have the right to shut down other people's thoughts and criticisms and he actually says that mankind cannot silence any opinions because he sees this as a form of crime and especially robbery and he says that anyone that silence anyone's opinion is robbing mankind's right especially those who have opposing thoughts so the ones that go against your ideals, shutting them down is definitely robbing them of their right to express their own opinion. Now, what he, not, and he then he also continues to say why humans are hurt by silencing opinions. Why, why do people feel hurt when they aren't being listened to? And it's because that, the main reason he says is because suppressed opinions actually may be um, the true opinion. And that humans are not perfect. They are, in other words, humans are infallible. They are not God. They are prone to mistakes. Therefore, they don't have the ability to decide for others, especially other human beings. And he says that even if people are wrong, they have a right to their thoughts. And for humans to be 100% correct, they actually must be open to criticism, which I agree strongly with this opinion. I mean, um, you need... It's one thing to actually have an opinion, but you need to have it validated. You need to have it strong basis. And in order to have that to happen, you need to be open to criticism. For example, um, you might have, you might be having a debate uh, about a certain topic, and then you are stressing your opinions. Now you want to be able to strengthen and give proof behind your opinion unless you shut down anything that's opposing it. So that's what he means by that. <clears throat> and um, he says that you shouldn't be afraid to speak the truth because if you are speaking truth, if, if you're truly speaking the truth, then your thoughts will actually be free from persecution. It will survive because it is the true opinion. That's what he says on chapter 2 about talking, uh, expressing your opinions. Now, chapter 3, he says, is about the liberty of acting on those opinions freely, without persecution. Acting on, basically he means acting on your opinions or, and actions without having the fear of being victimized or being, being called out for it, in a uh, long story short. But here's the thing. I mean, from here, it, it, it sounds that we have the right to do anything, right? It means that he says that humans have the right to kill, to, to, to commit a crime, because it's their, uh, it's, it, they have the liberty to do so. But here's where John Mill draws the line. He says that actions must have limits. And the limit here is actually when you, have, you are starting to affect other people. Now, an example, or a perfect example of this, is, is consumption of alcohol, right? So you can have a, a person drinking themselves to death. Now that's their, that's their right. That's their own... That's their liberty to do so. But when do we draw the line? We draw the line when he starts to consume a tremendous amount of alcohol and actually goes, and actually goes behind the wheel. Now when he does this, it actually means that he is actually taking a massive risk to harm others. That's when it affects other people. It affects the people outside of himself, and that's when he needs to draw the line. And he says that the, why he stands strongly upon 
the right to act on your opinion is because he believes in individuality. He says that it is the process of being an adult to learn from your experiences, trial and error. And you won't be able to learn from your errors if you never go into it in the first place. And that is what you want, that is the conclusion of the two chapters, uh, chapters two and three of John Mills on Liberty. And my personal opinion on this is I could not agree strongly, more strongly than John Mills here. I feel that John Mills is advocating for liberty of opinion, liberty of freedom of act, but he's also doing it in a sense where it is is on a consequential baseline. So it's not uh, it's not being it's not ridiculous, it's not radical, it's not it's not freely open minded uh, opinions. I agree with a lot of his points uh, to for example suppress opinions may be the true one. I'd say the perfect example of this would be the proletariats of the French Revolution. They had an opinion that the bourgeoisie was too much and their opinion was not actually taken into account because they were the poor people. But they fought for it. Their opinion was suppressed. They revolted and it actually ended up in being the perfect truth. In Their thoughts was actually the way it's supposed to be. And I also couldn't. I also cannot. I also cannot res- cannot respond any strongly to strong strongly to the chat chapter three where he's talking about uh, actions and how it cannot affect any uh, affect others. That's all for me. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.